Hi, welcome. Thank you, PSFK. Thank you, donor. Um, thank you, South by the Southwest. I think what's really exciting about the retail space in general today, experiences that are being built, is things like this. Like, look at this amazing space we're in. Normally a co-working space. Now they have, you know, interesting events. Um, South by Southwest, festivals do the same thing. They make cities more interesting to live in. Uh, you have these temporary experiences that happen, and they come to you, and or you go to them, and, and it helps you explore the urban landscape a little bit more. So that's what we're trying to do with Storefront. That's what gets me excited about it. It's really something that makes our cities more interesting uh, and helps us kind of redefine the urban dialogue to something that, to see what we want to see in cities. And so retailers everywhere are starting to do that. So my company is Storefront. Um, we are a retail tech startup. We are based in San Francisco. And so Storefront is a marketplace that connects brands, artists, designers to short-term retail spaces. Those are one day to six months is everything that we've seen so far happen through the site. And these are brands that are renting straight away through the Storefront site. So we're identifying some of the best locations in a city, San Francisco, New York, LA, Chicago, and we're helping them find these places, easily rent them, removing all the paper contracts and checks and everything like that, and making it very easy to find so you're not just calling a broker's card on a window and trying to explain who you are and what you're trying to do. There's way too much gray space in cities. Uh, sidewalks, walls, chain link fence, there's so much of it, so much of it's not creative space, but it could be. And one in 10 stores is sitting vacant. And so that's a, a huge issue. It's not just a US issue, it's a global issue. And you know, even if you go to New York or San Francisco and go to some of the best retail areas or best shopping areas or areas that have the most foot traffic, you're still gonna probably see, if you keep your eyes open, these vacant spaces with the one sign on them for the broker with the phone number. And it's just an inefficient industry and something that's changing very rapidly right now. Um, a lot of people are reclaiming these spaces in a lot of different ways. And there's 28 million small businesses, so 80% of our customers are SMBs or emerging businesses, these brands, artists, and designers that are getting going and they're testing markets. Maybe they want to go long term, maybe they're trying to move around every month uh, and start a new pop-up shop for a couple weeks in cities where they know their customers are buying from them online. And, uh, and so I'm going to get to a, a, a short video here in a second that's going to show a little bit more about what those experiences can be like when a brand, e-commerce brand goes offline. Indochino is one of the first brands to, to really make pop-up stores part of their company. It's a bit of a ballet. We are a men's online customized suiting brand. So we are trying to revolutionize the way men shop online. And we walk into it and we explain to that landlord, oh, you know, in the next couple of days, this is gonna look like a fully functioning operating store. And they kind of look at you in disbelief. They come back a couple of days later and all of a sudden, it is a completely fully running operation. essentially create a store every month. Set up, take down, running an event, and it's something that we've just committed to doing because we think it's the best way to create a wicked retail experience for guys. We had a lot of customers who had been huge fans of ours online, but they wanted to interact with us more, they wanted some help with styling, they wanted to see and feel fabrics. At the Indochino Traveling Tailor, a guy can come in, we pair him up with a personal stylist who will build an outfit with him, both sizing and all the personalization. And then at the end of it, you swipe your card, you build an Indochino account, and three weeks later you get your garment. So I think it's, it's a really great example of how e-commerce brands, especially like someone like Indochino who's also coming from Vancouver in the tech scene, is like thinking about brick and mortar. And how, you know, as Piers was mentioning, a lot, the largest majority of commerce is still happening offline, but there's, there's these brands, these new emerging brands are still thinking about how they're creating their brand for an offline experience. And so this brings me to more of the, the three different trends that we're seeing today uh, with these thousand stores opening and everything else uh, since we've started a couple years ago. Um, three economies that are happening right now, the personal selling revolution and then retail becoming more of an experience or a community hub. And so the sharing economy is pretty straightforward. Um, you know, we're seeing that marketplaces connect businesses uh, easier than ever before. 
uh, the workforce is getting distributed and it's becoming uh, more and more easy if you think of like Airbnb or maybe most of you got here with a Lyft or an Uber. You know, this is something that, it, that Storefront's doing with a, in a B2B focus. And then you have like the local economy where also, uh, you know, these retail experiences are becoming a community hub uh, and they're empowering local makers, artists, and designers. So, you know, if you're from Austin, if you're from New York, from San Francisco, even, you know, Minneapolis, Portland, all these cities that maybe you count as very hipster, everyone's thinking more about how do I get local food? How do I get local products? And maybe these people live in your building, but they didn't have access to that vacant storefront down the street. So I think that's what we're trying to accomplish, make this a much easier experience for them to connect with the people living in their city. And then on demand, so you have brands coming to their customers instead of sitting back at this big box store, they're like, how do I, you know, how do I bring, these, bring my experience to customers and let them know? A good example maybe would be City Target. Um, just about six to eight months ago, they opened up the first City Target in the middle of San Francisco. And so th they're trying, these brands are trying to either permanently or with pop-ups in short term, get into cities, go to the neighborhoods and the streets where their customers are. And then this is what gets me the most excited, uh, the personal selling revolution, the maker movement. It's never been easier to start a business. So everyone, you know, everyone's building, they're starting a business on, on Uber and then they're hiring out five more cars and like building their business on top of these platforms. The same thing we see with Storefront where you have someone who maybe started on Etsy um, or used Shopify, then they, you know, used Square, started going to some festivals then they're like, all right, now I'm ready to like build a full experience in this store, or I want to get onto uh, Valencia or in Soho and partner with another brand. All things you can do through Storefront and things that were hard to do before because you had to approach everyone manually. Like Pierce said, 95%, um, I think it's actually dropped a little bit below that. And even though we see that number going down, I think we're also going to see an equilibrium happening where these brick and mortar retail experiences still need to happen. Like, you know, why are we even here? Uh, we want to have interactions with others. We want to be able to have experiences. Like, it's just not the same if we're not there in person. Um, and so I think that's what's really powerful here is like, you know, in the UK, I think it's like 80, a little bit above 85% of commerce happens uh, offline. And so you've seen it happen a little more rapidly there and the high streets in London are a really interesting experience looking at how landlords have actually bought out entire blocks and started to change the community, change the brand of, of a street uh, where I think we're, we're starting to catch on to that as real estate holders in the US. So the big message here is create spaces that matter. Uh, whether you're a technology company and you have an app, whether you're a fashion brand, and it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. There's, there's a huge potential to create amazing spaces, whether it's built through beautiful architecture and design, whether it's a, a gallery where you're holding more non-traditional events. Um, there's, a, there's a place um, that took over this vacant theater in the Mission District in San Francisco, and they're called Gray Area Foundation for the Arts, and they just started hosting all these crazy events that like combine tech and art and like all these weird new ways. And, and it's something that you know, we're thinking we need to happen more and more and, make, and basically create the cities that we wanna see. So that's, that's it for me. Thank you guys so much. I'm I'd love to hear from you.